Shana Tava and Gidyantif. Turn this off for a second. I have to be careful what I say, and I'm not talking about saying yes to being president right before a pandemic hit. For that, I am grateful and I appreciate your support. Last year, I spoke about how my kids, Danny and Jack, would both be in college soon and how Shelly and I would long for them to come back home. Not sure we were imagining it going like this though, a virus, a pandemic, a lockdown, boys home, and I definitely was not prepared for six months. I'm sure you can relate to how unpredictable, hectic, crazy, unheard of, wonderful, and special this was all at the same time. I'm happy to say that they are back in school for four weeks and counting, and now we are longing for them to stay. <laughs> like all parents, we want our kids to stay safe. And at this point, if we were to see them, it would be at a social distance no hugs, and with masks. They should not be coming home. Our entire world has morphed into something new and unrecognizable. Quickly, everything has pivoted to being virtual, visiting with our friends and family, work, school, grocery shopping, doctor's appointments, and worship too. B'nai Israel has had to pivot. When COVID hit, we immediately needed to find ways to continue to provide stability, comfort, spirituality, and community to our members while staying true to who we are as a traditional conservative congregation. We thought carefully about the content that would offer a diversion and be inspirational to combat the monotonous, mundane days of this pandemic. We went virtual very quickly. Services, classes, bar and bat mitzvah tutoring, programs for our youth and our older members, pastoral counseling, funeral services, the list goes on and on. Knowing you could not physically enter our building but still needed us, we moved swiftly to make sure B'nai was and is always there and available to you. We talk a lot about being relevant in today's conservative movement and in our community. To be a leader and to differentiate, differentiate ourselves from other synagogues. Last spring, our Shillet Nursery School and Tama Torah teachers jump into action to provide online classes. Although smaller, we have managed to reopen our nursery school this fall. And look at us now. We've switched again from being totally online to now a hybrid model, offering both in-person and online experiences. This has not been easy. Our staff, clergy, Lay leaders have worked hard, in many ways, harder than during a normal year, to provide meaningful experiences without the feeling of missing out. We hope this vision, planning, and hard work is evident today to those of you who are here in person and to those of you who are joining us online. Some programs, like the listening tour, have taken a back seat, but in some ways, this challenge has also been good for us. I'd like to thank Dana Landy and Dina Gruber, our past and current vice presidents of membership, our caring committee, board of governors, and others who have made calls to our members throughout the year. We are learning what is important to you, what you value, what you need, especially now when away from our physical building. I would also like to thank Scott Hodes, our president-elect, Fonda Lowe, vice president of youth and education, Dan Fisher, Vice President of Religious Affairs, Executive Director Hal Osman, Pepe Strauss, our Facilities Director, Rabbi Safra and Berkowitz, Cantor's Josh and Cantor Boltz, and our Roadmap to Reopening Task Force for crafting a plan to make this week a reality. To offer in-person high holiday services to those who felt comfortable coming inside our building, while at the same time offering an in-home experience to Rabbi Safra and to Hal, especially your caring, your leadership, and your execution have been amazing. And I'm grateful to all of you. As we have been saying from the beginning, this is what being part of a community really means. You have shown us the power of our community, and I thank you. Of course, our success does come at a cost. With lost revenue from school tuition, 
room rentals, and of course, high holiday seats. We have seen the data, and we know that every member of our community has been affected differently by this pandemic. For some, the cost of remaining affiliated with our synagogue seem too much right now, but we will not accept the prospect of a member leaving our congregation for financial reasons. We will make it work. For others, however, the burden of this pandemic have been felt in other ways, just maybe not as much financially. I hope you will recognize the importance of stepping up to meet the community's need in this moment. Last week, you received a letter in the mail to kick off our Hanani annual giving campaign. For the sake of B'nai Israel, I ask that you consider joining Shelly and me, along with our lay leaders and professional leaders, in supporting this year's campaign. If you have given in the past, I can't thank you enough, and I ask that you consider a new gift for this year. This is extremely meaningful and a way for you to acknowledge your commitment to B'nai Israel and to support our efforts. Take the opportunity to say, Hanani, I am here for B'nai, just as B'nai has been here for me. If you are able, consider reinvesting in the shul what you may have saved in not purchasing high holiday seats. For those of you who may not have given before, I ask that you think about a time when B'nai Israel has been here for you and imagine what we might be capable of achieving together. We are grateful for every meaningful gift, regardless of the amount. And think about how you might want to be involved and participate this year, or how the synagogue might help you find the next path on your own personal Jewish journey. I have heard so many wonderful stories, some good takeaways from this pandemic. Having the kids home, celebrating Shabbat dinners together, Zoom seders that allowed family and friends who might not have normally been able to gather together see one another. And those who might not have been able to make it to shul to say Kaddish during a yard site, but were able to access our daily minion through Zoom. Before the pandemic, we would usually have had a handful of people call or watch our Shabbat service online. And now we're averaging over 225 devices logged in each Shabbat. Family members from near and far can share in the nachas of a bar or bat mitzvah all from the comfort of their home. Some of these innovations will stay with us long after the pandemic has ended, and so will some of the challenges our synagogue and the conservative movement have been facing for a long time. When it is possible to fully open our building, we know we will still be imagining how to best serve our members in ways that they want to be served. And even after COVID, I assure you that we will continue to find ways to ensure that this synagogue, our synagogue, remains relevant, supportive, and strong. Our building remains mostly closed, but our synagogue is very much open. From my family, Shelly, Danny, Jack, and myself to you, I wish you a gamar chatima tova. May we be inscribed and sealed for a good year, a safe year, a peaceful year of happiness and good health for ourselves and the ones we love. May we, be, we may be socially distant right now, but we need each other more now than we ever did. May the day soon come when we can all be together again in our sanctuary. Shana Tovah.